if you have solar panels if you're thinking of getting solar panels especially if you're thinking of a diy system please watch this video there's something in it for you it's the last day in november and the sun is shining and it's fantastic um, these two panels are part of a kit from EcoFlow, which I propped up against the hedge a couple of days ago. It took me about 30 minutes, are generating power very nicely. And at this precise moment, they are producing 260 watts in the winter sunshine, which is more than the base load of your average house. I have seven other panels up on the roof and these two are working seamlessly alongside them. It makes me so happy on a day like this that I am denying money to British Gas and I'm denying money to the government that taxes our energy. Thank goodness for solar power. It really works and you can do it DIY. So at this precise moment we're generating 300 watts which is incredible at the end of November and with the sun already low in the sky. This is the EcoFlow dual microinverter. One panel connected here with these two cables, the other panel connected here with these two cables. The bit I didn't make clear. Out from here is the 230 volts, the mains voltage. And it just literally plugs into, normally it would be a wall socket or whatever, but in this case, I've just plugged it into an extension. Now, another thing I maybe didn't uh, explain very clearly. I'm going to unplug it. Okay. Now, you may think the sun is still shining on these panels. The microinverter is still working away here. There'll be power on this. Isn't that unsafe? No, it's not. The architecture of these microinverters, in fact, all the inverters you have in a house are to prevent ever putting power into a system if the power has gone off. So you may think you've got a solar panel system and if the power fails externally, unless you've got a special system, the average system installed on a house and a DIY system list just turns off. It's a safety issue for people who could be working on power lines external to the house. So these microinverters have to be approved and they have to prove that they do this. And the basic design architecture makes it impossible for the power from here at the moment to appear here. However, as soon as it's connected back to 230 volts, it will start generating power and feeding it back out. As simple as that. It is already now generating power and putting it back into the grid. The grid in this case being our house. Oh, yep, 310 watts at this moment going into the house. So I've just walked down to the uh, nearer to the house and you can see I have solar panels on the roof behind me and you can see how important placement is. At this time of year they get very little sunshine. So I just described how that uh, DIY system up there worked. This is a microinverter from a different company. This is an N phase, but it's the same idea. This is a single one. The panel plugs into there here on standard connectors and the mains power comes off here. The difference with this system is it's all gathered together and it goes back to my main distribution and it feeds the power back in there. How does the house and the equipment in the house know to use the power that's coming from your panels? Why wouldn't it just carry on taking the power from the mains coming in from the national grid? Well, it's fairly simple. The nominal voltage for the national grid is 230 volts. And if you are getting 230 volts for the national grid, these will produce a voltage slightly more and they will adapt to the situation. So let's say, for instance, these will go to 231 volts. Now that ensures that all the power coming out of the panels is used in your house. Your equipment will take that power. If they don't use all the power, you will export power. And because your voltage is slightly higher than the grid, the power will flow back out through your electricity meter and into the system and will be used by your neighbors, etc. So the reason your equipment in the house uses your power and every scrap of it is because the voltage is higher and these clever devices these microinverters or big inverters if you have a single system do it for you you don't need to think about it it does it for you as the next stage of a diy system would be battery storage how does that work well 
what you would do is, um, if the power is not being consumed by your equipment in the house, the battery system will detect that and will take that power and prevent you from exporting any power. Instead of extra excess power going to the national grid, it goes into your battery. Then as the sun goes down and these produce less and are incapable of meeting the demand of the house, the battery system will step in and it'll have an inverter very much like this inside it. It will produce a voltage slightly higher than the national grid, but only enough to power your house. It will not allow export. So that allows you to use every scrap of your battery power as well. So, in short, it's all about setting the voltage, equivalent of setting the water pressure. So all the power is used in your house and only leaves your house if you have more power than you need. If you have a battery system, it will absorb the extra power and you will still not export anything. I want to go off grid. I I, I hate giving money to the government, I hate giving money to British Gas and any of the multinationals. So I intend to have an off-grid system with big battery power, meaning I will be totally disconnected for the grid unless there are occasions when I run out of power.